Patricia and I had been married four years when this event came about. Pat was a year behind me in school. I knew her but we never dated and didn't run in the same crowd. I just barely made it through high school so I didn't go to college. I went instead to a trade school for welding. My older brother had played football and got a scholarship to a small college and became an accountant. He worked for a local plant and he helped me get a welding job in the maintenance department. Pat worked for a major discount chain as a supervisor of a department in the local store. Pat and I are not the best looking people in the world, but little children don't run away from us either. I am a little over six foot tall with black wavy hair, a complexion that tans easy and I weigh 185 pounds. Pat is five foot six inches tall with dirty blonde hair and weighs in the neighborhood of 125 pounds. Her best feature is her legs, which are long and curved in the right places. Her breasts are 32C and cone-shaped. We met at a party one night about six months after I had started to work at the plant. We talked for a while and when I found out she was not going with anyone, I asked her on a date. We started going steady and got married after a year. We were not making a lot of money so I bought her a cheap engagement and wedding ring with a promise I would upgrade them when I could. Our S life started three months after we met and was good and got better with time. We had it almost every day and most weekends it was twice or three times. We did anything except you know what. Pat told me she would never do that, not to even try. The plant was installing new equipment and was offering overtime when I decided this would be an opportunity to get Pat a diamond ring. I started working two or three hours of overtime a day and would work a double shift on the day before my break. I got pretty tired at times, but I wanted to surprise Pat. I told Pat I would be working overtime every day for a while, and she seemed to be okay with it. This went on for four months, and I couldn't seem to get enough sleep. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus, you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. I came in from work one Friday night and Pat seemed distant. I tried to talk to her but she wouldn't talk. I went asleep in my recliner and must have been really passed out because when I woke Pat had wrapped me with duct tape and rope to where I could not move. I asked her what was going on and she said, I will tell you in a minute. She walked out of the room. I didn't know what to think because we were not into kinky. She came into the room about 30 minutes in a short teddy outfit. She said, Roger, I was told some disturbing news this week and I have been thinking about it. Jen, my best friend, told me that you was running around on me. She told me she saw you with a woman at the DO drop INN last Friday night. I said, Pat I was working overtime last Friday. I pulled a double shift. I have never run around on you, and you should know that. She said, why would she lie to me about that? You have been coming home late a lot lately. Who is the woman, Roger? I said, there is no woman, Pat. There has never been anyone but you. And yes, I have come home late because I have been working overtime. She said, I think you are lying. I plan on a little revenge, and if it happens again, it will be much worse next time. I said, Pat. Are you going to take the word of Jen? You don't believe me. Call my boss and ask him about last Friday. She said, he would lie for you. You men all stick together. I said, Pat, don't do this. You are going to mess up this marriage big time. Please don't do something you will regret. She walked over and pulled off her underwear and stuffed them in my mouth and wrapped duct tape around them in my head. She leaned over close to me and said, I want you to smell that Henry is going to be F tonight and you are going to get to watch. While I am F. Henry, you can think about that little you have been F. I was straining as hard as I could, but I could not budge the tape. I didn't believe she was going to bring Henry into our home and F him. Henry is the only person I don't like. He is a big ex-football player who thinks he is a ladies' man. He was always bragging about all that he was getting. He bragged about the wives he had F while their husband was out of town. She brought a video camera from the bedroom and told me she was going to film this so I would never forget. She set the cameras up to cover the couch area. Before she set it up, she took about 30 seconds of me. She said, smile you get to be on this tape also. A few minutes later the doorbell rang and she went to the door and Henry walked into my home. He looked over at me and said, hey man, I have always wanted to F this little woman. I couldn't believe it when she called Jin and set it up to F her in front of you. You have got to be a wimp. You can't satisfy her.
Pat just giggled when he said that. I was struggling so hard I thought my heart would burst. I was covered with sweat. I could not believe this was happening. Pat came over in front of me and said, If you had kept your in your pants, I would not have done this. But I can't let you F around on me and not get some revenge. Just remember this the next time you gets hard for some strange stuff. I shook my head with tears running down my cheeks. She turned to Henry and said, Big boy, get out of those clothes. We have got some to do. Henry pulled his clothes off and stood there. Pat dropped down on her knees. After about 10 minutes of this Henry said, Oh yeah get ready. She lay down on the couch and looked at me and said, Are you enjoying see your wife with other man? You might as well enjoy it because I am. I have read stories of men that got off on watching their wives get f by other men. I am not one of those men. I thought I would throw up but I knew if I did I would drown in my own vomit. I managed to keep it down. I had closed my eyes and couldn't watch anymore. I wished I could shut my ears. They lay quiet for a few minutes and I heard them get up. Pat went in the kitchen and brought a glass of water over in front of me. She said, I will give you a drink of water, but you are not to speak. If you say one word, I will put the gag back in your mouth. I drank the water, and as soon as I drained the glass she shoved the gag back in and replaced the tape. She said, I was only going to let him F me one time but he is so good and I am so turned on. We are going to the bedroom now. I will try to keep the noise down. I tried to not listen but it is hard when Pat would scream. I want to sleep after that or passed out. I came to when they came back into the room and Henry was dressed. Pat walked him to the door. She was walking like it hurt to do so. Henry said something to her and she said, No this was the only time. Do not call me or come by. I will not see you again. You are a great F, but this will not happen again. Good night. She walked over to me and said, I am sorry you had to hear us when he was F my, but I could not stop him. I am going to leave you like this. I will cut you loose in the morning. If you ever F around on me again, Roger, I will bring two men here for you to watch. I hope you have learned your lesson. I am going to take the gag out of your mouth. Don't say a word, or it goes back in. I love you. She took the gag out of my mouth. My mouth was so dry I couldn't have said a word. As she left she said, I am going to sleep in the guest room. The bed is not in too good a shape in our room. I will let you loose when I get up. Night, baby. I had been working a tear into the tape close to my hand and I kept working to get loose. After a couple of hours I finally got one hand loose. I was so weak I could only go for a little while at a time. But I got loose as the sun was coming up. I had pissed in my pants so the first thing I did was pull my clothes off. I walked into the kitchen and got the orange juice out of the refrigerator and started taking small sips. I wet a dish towel and cleaned the dried sweat off me as best as I could. I wanted to go to the guest room and beat the hell out of Pat but I knew I would go to jail for that. I decided that it was time for me to get the hell away from here before I did something I would regret. I packed a suitcase and a box with as many clothes as I could get in them and got the other stuff I needed and got in my truck and left. I found the camera in the bedroom and took the tape. I figured I would have a use for it. I drove around for a while before I decided to go to my brother's. He was surprised to see me and said, What is wrong with you? You look beat. I said, Fix us some coffee. I have to talk to you. I need your help. As he fixed the coffee I started telling him what happened. I told him about Jen telling Pat that she had seen me out with another woman last Friday night. He broke in and said, You was working overtime last Friday. I said, Let me finish. I told him how Pat had ducked taped me to the chair, and how Henry had came over, and what the two had done in the living room and then in the bedroom. He asked, How did you get loose? I told him about working until I got free. I told him I left after I got my clothes and some other stuff. I told him I had the videotape, and I wanted him to put it in a safe place for me. As he was asking what I planned to do, Rhonda, his wife, walked in. She looked at me and said, Damn, Roger. You look like you was rode hard and put up wet. Rick told her what I had told him. She looked at me in disbelief. I told her I had the tape if she needed proof. Rick cut in and said, I think I would like to see enough of it to make up my mind about what is going on. We got our coffee and moved to the living room. I got the tape and gave it to Rick. He put it in the player and rewound it and then pushed play. As it started you could see me taped to the chair. Rick fast forwarded it until Henry came on the scene. As soon as Pat got down in front of Henry and took his in her mouth Rhonda jumped up and said, That is enough for me. 
The bee is crazy. I hope you kicked her ass out. Rick stopped the tape. Rick asked what I planned to do. I said, I think I will quit my job and leave the area. I can get a job welding anywhere. I don't want to ever see Pat again. And if I see Henry, one of us is going to wind up in the hospital or cemetery. He said, don't do anything yet. Let me talk to Mr. Simpson before you quit. I will call him today. You get some sleep. I will pull your truck in the garage and pull the doors down. If Pat calls, we haven't seen or heard from you. I agreed. I ate a bowl of cereal and went to bed. I woke up late that afternoon. I got up, took a shower and felt halfway decent. When I went into the kitchen, Rick said, Good news. Mr. Simpson says they need a welder at the Jackson plant, and he can transfer you if you would like to stay with the company. He told me to have you come see him Monday morning. Pat called Rick's house twice Saturday and once Sunday. All three times Rick told her he had not seen me or heard from me. He told me she was crying all three times. I called Jennifer's house on Sunday afternoon. Before I called I dialed the number to disable the caller ID. I didn't want her to know where I was staying. When she answered the phone I said, Jennifer, I hope you are happy. You are the cause of a marriage breakup. Your lies have cost me my wife. Tell your boyfriend if I ever see him. His ass is grass and I will be the lawn mower. She said, Who is this? I said, This is Pat's ex-husband. I hung up. I went to work on Monday and went to Mr. Simpson's office. He talked me into staying another week to help get the plant in good shape. He told me I could report to the Jackson plant the next Monday. I agreed to stay if I could work four hours of overtime each day. He said, That would be great. That should put us in good shape and ahead of schedule. See me Friday for your paperwork. Pat came to Rick's house Tuesday night about 10 minutes after I got there. When Rick answered the door she barged past him say, Where is Roger? I know he is here I followed him from the plant. Rick told her I was in the kitchen. She came running into the kitchen and tried to hug me but I turned away. She asked Roger, Why haven't you come home? I have been so worried about you. I said, Patricia, I don't have a home. I don't have a wife. I lost my best friend. All I have left is my brother and his family and my job. Pat fell on her knees on the floor and said, Roger, I made a bad mistake. Jennifer called me and said you had called her. She told me she and Henry had set us up. She has been seeing Henry for six months and he talked her into lying to me about you. She was the one who talked me into getting my revenge. I was stupid to believe her. I pray that you can forgive me for being so stupid. Patricia, you may have started out to get revenge, but when you moved from the living room to the bedroom with your lover boy, the revenge stopped and your animal lust took over. I lost all respect for you and my love for you died when I saw you drop to your knees with Henry. I will be moving out of the area next week. I don't want to see you again. You are a non-person to me, Pat. Pat, I want you to know that I was working overtime every time I was late so I could buy you a diamond ring. That won't be happening now. She started to beg me not to leave her and let her make everything up to me. She said, Roger, I will do anything if you will come back home. I will never dispute your word. I will do whatever it takes. I said, Pat, maybe Jen and Henry will take you into their little cliché. You like his so much I am sure he would be glad to shack up with you as long as he can F around on you. She crawled over to me on her knees and looked at me with tears running down her face and said, Oh God. I have hurt you so bad. I am so, so sorry. I told both of them to never talk to me again. What am I going to do without you, Roger? Please forgive me and give me one more chance. I said, Pat, I can't do that right now. I could never sit on that couch or sleep in that bed. In fact, I could never go back into that house where you tore the heart right out of my body. I want you to think about this. Think what it would have been like if I had done that to you. What if I had brought a woman into our home and made you watch as I F her in front of you? You think of that for a while because it is going to be a long time before I can get it out of my mind. I asked her if she could quit lying to me for just one time. She looked at me and said, Roger, I haven't been lying to you. I really messed up. Please forgive me. I said, Pat, you have been with Henry before the other night. I don't know what you thought you two were doing but that was not the first time for you. Did you really think I would just take all that and we would go on like nothing happened? Do you think I am that much of a wimp? Where were you last Friday night when I called and you didn't answer? If Jen and Henry are F whom else is he F? 
Do you think he might be carrying some type of venereal disease, and now you have spread it to me? No, you only thought of his and how much you liked it. You laughed when he called me, Pencil, and you didn't hesitate to carry him to our bedroom. I think he has been there before. I gave you my heart and you tore it apart. I stopped to get a drink of water and calmed down before I got mad enough to bodily toss her ass out of the house. She said, Roger, I am sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Yes, I have been with Henry before. Last Friday night I went to Jen's and Henry was there. They cooked up this thing and I went along with it. Jen and I both F Henry that night. I can only say that I am sorry. I said, you tell Jen and Henry that they better lay low and watch their backs because I will be after them eventually. I will be at the house tomorrow to get the rest of my stuff. I will pick it up while you are at work. I will leave my keys on the kitchen table. Whatever I leave you can sell, give away, or throw in the trash. The divorce papers are being drawn up now. My lawyer will be in touch. I took my name off the bank accounts. I took half out of each. You have had your revenge, Pat, 